to me your secrets. Show me your nightmares. I'll cut the gray in the dark, dear, whether or not you dare. Welcome to All Cats Are Gray in the Dark. I'm your host, April Simmons. This podcast contains true cases of graphic violent crimes and other stories of a dark nature. Please be advised that due to the subject matter and violent, sometimes sexual content and obscene language, this podcast is not for children or the faint of heart. Come in! Are you ready? Come in! <laughs> Are you ready for the football? No. But please don't. Don't bring any football here. <laughs> no football. We don't allow that. How are you doing this time? We're, we're behind some episodes. Our listeners are going to be mad at us. Don't be mad at us. We love you so much. We've been trying to stay away from each other when we're sick and stuff. And then... So much of it going around. There's and then flu we had everywhere. An episode that we had a corrupted file. And it got deleted after I'd already edited it. So I was really mad. Ugh. So we were like, fuck it for a week or so. Yeah. Just, just fuck it. I was just so mad. You have no idea. I was just like, fuck everything. And it was such a good episode. It would yeah. have been our absolute best episode. You guys completely missed it. We're going we're gonna to re-record it, though. We will, but we're going to do this one first because I want to. And this is a terrible subject matter, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. The world's worst pedophiles. Blech. Yeah. I researched this for like two days straight. I and don't I, see how you're still sane. I'm after. not. I'm yeah, not. I, it was just torture. Like I would have to. I'd like get up and take breaks and stuff because I would just get so frustrated and. I angry. can't research. I just I can't research topics like that because I would probably and I have a super strong stomach. I think I would get violently ill. I would I would have to go vomit. I just mm-mm. I don't even like talking about it because it pisses me off so much. My Thinking on this is, if you were caught molesting a child in any form or fashion, I don't care if you're just touching the child's chest in a sexual manner, you need to go be publicly executed. Right then. If you're caught and there's a witness and they see it or there is video proof or any kind of photographic evidence that 100% proves you are guilty, you deserve public execution right then. There's your trial. That's just how I feel on it. I'm pretty much along the same lines. I just, I don't, I don't want sex abuse to be a thing. Like, honestly, I know that's I wish it didn't generic. exist. Yeah. 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 It, it, it shouldn't does, exist. It's existing far too often. The sex trafficking lately is just absolutely insane. Yeah, the every Super Bowl. Day, every day I'm seeing um, new kids that are missing locally and it just freaks me out it's starting to get it's starting to get too close to home because you know i have a niece that i care about and you have your daughter and it's like they're in that trafficking age group anybody can be trafficked as we discussed even adults yeah sure absolutely anybody can but they're in that like optimal age and that scares the hell out of me yeah (coughs) and that's why i support the second amendment (laughs) The first one on the list, these are not in any kind of order, by the way, because it's hard to it's hard to weigh these against each other because some will have done more offenses and some will have done only a few but to babies. And so it's hard to kind yeah. of weight that. So these are in no sort of order. They're just the worst that I could find via the Internet. Okay. Earl Brian Bradley is a former pa- pediatrician from Lewis, Delaware and convicted serial child child molester. He was indicted in 2010 on 471 charges of molesting, raping, and exploiting 103 child patients. 471 charges. Over 100 children. And this motherfucker is still walking the earth? Mm -hmm. I have a lot more on him. He was caught in the act multiple times, but it was either dismissed as legitimate medical procedures or he convinced investigating officials that he was being exploited for money since most of his patients were poor or on welfare. What a shithead. It seems like the poorer you are in this country, the less you are believed. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, He actively molested, raped, and sodomized his patients for 15 years. 
This went on for 15 years. He had 13 hours of assault on video. Some so violent he had to resuscitate the victim. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's uh, that's some of the part of this when I was researching. I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? I have heard of this guy, but I, again, I don't like to go yeah, into you detail. You know, I, details, yeah, right? I don't like to go into details. I just hear about him and I'm like, okay, someone needs to kill that motherfucker and then go on with my day. Your dogs are... Having a battle royale in the floor. Yeah. Anyway, My sweet puppies. He victimized 1,200 children and possibly more. Average age three and youngest was three months. Three months old. Yeah. See, this is something I don't understand, though. And this is something that all parents out there need to know and probably do, unless you're just an absolute dumbass, in which case you probably shouldn't have a child. Never, ever, ever let a doctor or a nurse or a dentist or anyone in the medical profession take your child out of your sight unless it's going in to the operating room for surgery, which is, that's understandable. If you're going to get your kid's tooth filled, teeth cleaned, any kind of medical examination, don't let them out of your sight. If someone says that you can't go back in the room with your child, you get up and you fucking leave with your child. It's a red flag. It's the biggest red fucking flag that you can have. <clears throat> At least once per year there were documented complaints of his abuse, but nothing was ever done. Doctors at cocktail parties joked, if your daughter has an ear infection, take her to Bradley and she'll get a free vaginal exam. Oh my God. How can other doctors make jokes like this? They knew. They knew. They knew. They knew, and they. Didn't they should. Do they about should. It. They should I be tried. They should also, be they should be yeah. prosecuted. Yeah. For knowing about this and making jokes about it, that is horrifying. Mm. But I mean, most doctors are men. Let's face it. Yep. And they're a big one, big gentleman's club, basically. Really. And they're gonna take care of their own. Anyway, he used catheters to obtain urine samples when it was not necessary in a lot of his Those patients. motherfuckers hurt. I know. God, I can't imagine doing that to a child. He moved around to different locations to avoid reputation hits. Mm. Like once it started going, rumors start flying around him, and then he would just move. And move his practice. In 2001, he opened his own private office called Babies Pediatrics. Mm-hmm. He decked out his office to be pleasing to children, a mini Ferris wheel, a carousel, life-size Disney characters, a movie theater, a makeshift planetarium, and he would also give them a lollipop, popsicle, or sometimes a toy. See, I could see my child totally wanting to go there for those things because the dentist yeah. she goes to, it has a little miniature jungle gym in there, and she loves to go to the dentist just so she can play on that jungle gym. I, I, I highly urge, if you guys are interested in this case, look up a picture of his office. Even from the outside, it looks It's appealing to appealing, kids. It's a yeah. very much appealing to children. You look at it and you think, that looks like a fun place to go. His own sister, who had hired, he had hired as an office manager, reported him to the State Medical Society in 2004. It was dismissed as just a family matter, and no investigation came from it. God, even his own sister reported his own him. Sister reported him. But this, oh, this infuriates me. The trial was in 2011. He has a life sentence of. A life sentence plus 165 years with no chance for parole. Thank you, Jesus. Why did they not just kill him? I get, I'm assuming it's Delaware probably, probably, probably doesn't probably, have a death yeah, penalty. It's probably not a death penalty. That's probably why he was practicing there. He knew if he ever got caught, he wouldn't be put to death. But the metal, medical center, Beeb Medical Center, where he had worked for many years, was sued by the victims for allowing this activity. To Good. Continue because they, you know, had been reported to on all, all this stuff. The victims did receive a settlement, but it had to be divided up amongst all of them. So it yeah, so they didn't get very, very, mm, very much. Man, I think they said the average was a thousand to four thousand each. Or something. Oh my god, they each. I mean, money is uh, you. Uh, I don't even know how to say it. You know, there's no amount of money worth what they went through. None. I mean, it could be a billion dollars, and it wouldn't add up to what these poor children went through. The guy, if I was a parent, he wouldn't have ever gone to trial. 
Yeah. I would be going to trial because he would be a dead man. Okay, next on the list is a woman. How about that for a shocker? It happens. It, it does happen. It's rare, but it happens. It's, it's rare. If you look on the Mississippi Sex Offender Registry, which uh, all states have public sex offender registries, you can just Google your state yes, sex offender do. registry, and there's women on every single one of them in every town. Yeah. But Vanessa George was a daycare worker convicted for photographing and abusing approximately 64 children under her care at Little Ted's Nursery in Plymouth, UK. In 2009, she is known as Britain's worst female pedophile. She swapped images online with a group of four other pedophiles who were also convicted. They were like considered a pedo ring or whatever. All but one were female. Yeah. Colin Blanchard was the only male. There were others. Tracy Lyons, Angela Allen, and Tracy Dauber were the other females. She still refuses to name the toddler. She had, she had copped to some of the charges, mm -hmm. but she will not name the toddlers and babies she actually abused. She was released in September 2019. What? Yes, yes. And lives in a taxpayer-funded flat. How infuriating is that? Why? Someone needs to find her address and put her out of her misery. I'm not saying kill her, because I don't condone murder. But, you know, little little honey, a couple of ants, you know, be okay. In addition to not being allowed unsupervised contact with children, she is also not allowed to own a device that can access the internet. Good. But yeah. I bet she does. Oh yeah, no. You know, there's but what that's like prisoners. That's like prisoners are in state prisons aren't allowed to have cell phones. But they do. Shit, every single one of them. Yeah. You know. So I, I don't know. I bet no do. one's checking. Yeah, no, probably not. Probably too much trouble to check. Honestly, yep. nobody cares anymore. But I, I guess it just bothers me that she. Uh. She only did like seven or eight years, I think. For and over 60 children. I mean, 64 children that she not only abused, but took pictures of and passed them around. All right, United Kingdom. What the fuck is wrong with you? Well, that's like, I, I hate to talk bad about there or Canada, but Canada's one of the worst about light sentences on criminals. Yeah, no, it's true. And I, I, I love Canada and I want to And then you have extreme time. places. I'm not saying get as extreme as the Middle East where they cut your head off. But, you know, being a pedophile... Cut their head off, or at least cut their little. If head they off. get caught being a, <laughs> if they get caught being a pedophile, cut their heads off. Cut all their heads off. <laughs> you want to read this next one, <laughs> Victor Lash Lashovsky? Okay, a gold tooth Russian pedophile who treated his victims as his sexual slaves or personal harem. Committed over 900 rapes and sexual attacks on underage girls, mostly orphans, usually around the age of 13. He and his wife had three children of their own and fostered nine more. By day, he ran a shoe repair shop, but at night, he regularly attacked adolescent girls. So he was married and had kids. And fostered. The foster and fos kids are the main ones. Okay, I was going to say, did he abuse his own I, children? There are probably others, but... The foster kids mm. are the main victims. The girls discussed the abuse amongst themselves, but they considered him their father and were afraid to tell anyone else. One girl finally came forward to tell their foster mother, and she went right to the police. Bravo on both. Absolutely. So the, yeah, that, the I, wife. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm the one yeah. that wrote in bravo on both, because bravo for the little girl for yes. coming forward. And bravo for the mother, despite it being her husband, going yes. straight to the fucking police. Yes. Because I know of one who was told, the wife was told, and all the wife did was leave the husband and left the kid there with the pedophile. And ended oh, up... Most women just go in denial. They're like, that yeah, didn't happen. That didn't happen? No, yeah. this one knew that it happened and, and divorced the husband, but then ran off with a 19-year-old boy. Damn. Which made me wonder, you know, if she was almost the same. Uh, she was only, he was only jailed 22 years and six months. Russia must not have a very big penalty for pedophiles. You think that Russia's big tough country in, in Russia, 
you know, we we kill you or whatever. The girl said he was fostering and so got sent back to the orphanage. And I think that's just sad. Yeah. Because, I mean, they could have left with left them with the mother. Yeah. Because, I mean, she, she seemed okay, to care mother, about them. Yeah, the mother said that she had no clue this stuff was going on. And, um, and she may not have. Yeah. And I mean, Especially if she when went and told. Forward and told. Yeah. She immediately went to the police. So yeah. She did. She did right by them, but I 100%. guess they were just wary of that in general. Sure. But they got sent back to the orphanage after mm. all that. So That's so sad. I know that but I mean, an orphanage is better than getting raped repeatedly, you know? Yeah, and it sounded like they were getting raped like every freaking night. Ugh. I could not find exact dates on this, but the articles, most of the articles were dated from 2018. So I'm guessing that's when the arrest and trial so, so he's just now starting his prison sentence. Yeah, he's just starting um, his 22 years. Maybe it'll so. be like America and somebody will figure out why he's in there and it'll just, you know. Yeah. Um. The next one on the list. Oh, this is another one that's... Oh, you're going to be mad. Everybody's I'm mad at mad. all of these. I know, yeah. Okay, <laughs> no, this is, this is a particularly bad one like the first one. Peter Gerald Scully is an Australian child rapist. Scully lived in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia with his wife and two children prior to fleeing to the city of Manila, Philippines in 2011 before he could be charged with his involvement in a property scheme. Prior to leaving Victoria, he operated an escort service website without a license which offered his Malaysian girlfriend as a prostitute. From the island of Mindanao, I don't even know if that's right, I'm sorry, y'all. I have not, I did not look up pronunciations. I'm a bad host. He is alleged alleged to have built up a lucrative international pedophile ring that offered pay per view video streams of children being tortured and sexually abused on the dark web. His and this is what really uh. confounds me. His two Filipino girlfriends and other female accomplices accomplices helped him procure his child victim. Jesus. Okay, women, kill them too. I'm like, who are these kill women? Kill them too. Yeah. They obviously have aren't, aren't parents, have never been a mother. Yeah. The most notorious of Scully's output was a video called Daisy's Destruction, Get Ready to Be Mad, which he sold to clients for up to $10,000. Made in 2012, the multi-part film is so extreme that it was for some time regarded as urban legend. It features the torture and brutal rape of a number of girls by Scully, and some Filipina accomplices. The three main victims were Liza, age 12, Cindy, 11, and Daisy, 18 months. God. And people actually paid to watch that? Yes, they did. See, they, the need to, they need to be killed, too. After Daisy's destruction surfaced and a national manhunt was launched, Good. Scully was eventually tracked to Malabale City in the Philippines. I don't, I'm probably saying that wrong, too. Arrested on... 20th of February, 2015. Investigators had six warrants for his arrest, all relating to the abduction and sexual abuse of the two cousins. I'm not sure what cousins they're... I, I guess two of the girls were related. I don't know. Mm. They didn't really specify. I don't know why they even said that in the article. Um, investigators managed to uncover the fates of the three primary victims in Daisy's destruction. L Liza was found alive, as was Daisy though her treatment had been so vicious that she has lasting physical injuries. 11-year-old Cindy had been murdered, what? allegedly by Scully, before being strangled to death with a rope. The girl was subjected to bouts of rape and torture and then made to dig her own grave at 11. How is he still alive? He needs to be tortured. He needs to not just be publicly executed. He needs to be viciously tortured first. On video. Um, yes. For the he, world he to see. He, yeah. video, he videotaped himself killing Cindy. Wow. The 11-year-old. He faced a total of 75 charges. He was on trial with others who assisted in the production of his pornography, including four men, Germany's Christian Rausch, Filipinos Alexander Lau, and Althea Chia and a Brazilian doctor, Haniel, Haniel Caetano de Oliveira. This has got the worst fucking names in this damn shit. Anyway. And once again, I mean, doctor, you yeah, know. Another doctor. On October 2015, a fire severely damaged the evidence room containing his computer logs. Of course and it did. Destroying key evidence. Some believe Scully may have bribed mm -hmm. a local police officer as corruption in the Philippines is high. He was found guilty of one count of human trafficking and five counts of rape 
On June 13, 2018, Scully and his girlfriend, Alvarez, were sentenced to life in prison. That kind of blows my mind because the Philippines don't play. Yeah. I, I'm surprised that they got life in prison. They should have been, you know, executed. I'm going to take a quick break because we're halfway through the list. So. And I need to go vomit. <laughs> For real. Welcome to Ghostly. Pat, what are you doing? What? I want people to know that we're a podcast that takes a deep dive into some of the scariest ghost stories. But we don't do the creepy voices or weird sound effects. We debate the ghost stories. And aren't you supposed to be the skeptic? I am, but they'll find that out once they listen. Look, all you have to do is tell them to listen to Ghostly and that our listeners get to decide which stories are real. And which stories are just old folklore. Exactly. Download Ghostly wherever you find great podcasts. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. And we're back. Welcome back to this extremely touchy subject. No pun intended. Yeah, please don't don't <laughs> make that pun ever again. Um. Yeah, it is a difficult subject, and I'm. I it's didn't know this one. I think. Out of yeah, all and I didn't know. realize, and I, I guess I did not realize exactly how bad it was going to be. I was watching a TV series, and I saw this thing about several pedophiles living in the same area, and I was just like, "Huh, we should do an episode about the worst pedophiles." But I didn't know going into it exactly how far this would go and how bad it really was. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I knew this kind of shit happened. Don't get me wrong. I knew this shit happened. But the level of depravity was just, too, it was too much. And in some cases, these motherfuckers are out or didn't get enough punishment. That's what pisses me off. I mean, yeah. it pisses me off that they even do it, of course. But the fact that they're caught doing it and they get a slap on the fucking wrist. Oh, yeah. And, a, oh, that was really bad of you. You shouldn't do that anymore. You know, mm -hmm. but we're going to give you three years probation and house arrest. And you know. I guess the one of the worst parts to me when I was doing this research is finding out just like there's all, all different walks of life, different professions. All these people are different in a sense. It's like there aren't just like a there isn't just like a checklist like here's this, this and this how you can tell this person's a pedophile. There really isn't. Right. I mean, it goes anywhere. It can be anybody. Wealthy, anybody can be hiding it. Yeah. Super wealthy to the poorest of the poor. Doctors, dentists, lawyers, all the way down to uh, teachers school teachers. And, yeah. Daycare workers. You know, you just, you don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's what's scary is they don't have, you know, the scarlet A or whatever. It's like with just regular serial have. killers and stuff like that. A lot of times. There are those signs, you know? Right, yeah. Absolutely. And then, and you come to something like this, and you're like, most people didn't know. I mean, that woman, you know, didn't, the victor's wife or whatever, didn't, she was there. And he, I think I read he had an apartment separate. He basically used the money from fostering that got paid from the government to rent an apartment separate, and he would take the girls there. To do that. So that's why she didn't know. So okay. Well, she, the, he took them to an apartment. Okay. And she didn't know anything about it. It's weird, though, that she, being that close to him, wouldn't see signs. You know? Well, that's why I think that once they did come forward and say something, I think that's why she went to the police because she was like, oh. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. yeah I yeah. think so. Maybe there were signs there, but maybe she just didn't see proof. You know what I mean? Right. And so I can't blame her for that. Like, she right. didn't see the proof. She might have seen signs. I mean, there's people that have been married to serial killers and had absolutely no mm -hmm. idea. You know, so I can understand that. Do you want to read the next one? Yeah. Er, Richard William er, Huckle. I was reading through, so that's it. Okay. He was a convicted British serial sex offender arrested by Britain's National Crime Agency after a tip-off from Australian police and was convicted of 71 counts of serious sexual assaults against children while posing as a teacher, photographer, and devout Christian in Malaysia. 
In 2016, Huckle from Ashford, Kent, was given 22 life sentences. Again, should have been executed. I don't think England has the death penalty, though. I don't know. After admitting to 71 charges of sex abuse of children aged between 6 months and 12 years, between the years of 2006 and 2014. His computer contained more than 20,000 indecent photographs and videos of his assaults. These were shared with other pedophiles through a website on the dark web. I hate the dark web. Can I just say yeah. that? There yeah. is no good reason for the dark for the dark web to exist. And there are cops that surf the dark web to try to catch people, but good. it's difficult. Yeah, it's well, difficult. Because there it's needs the dark to, web. Yeah. yeah, it's so encrypted. Mm -hmm. Huckle worked as a freelance photographer, tried to make a business out of his abuse by crowdfunding the release of the images. Are you fucking kidding yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. He presented himself as a practicing Christian and first visited Malaysia on a teaching gap year when he was 18 or 19. He went on to groom children while doing voluntary work and abused up to 200 Malaysian children. He was compiling a pedophile's manual at the time of his arrest in 2014. The Old Bailey judge sentencing him described the 60-page manual as a truly evil document. Well, yeah. Some quotes. Impoverished kids are definitely much easier to seduce than middle-class Western kids. And I hit the jackpot a three-year-old girl as loyal to me as a dog, and nobody seemed to care. Yeah, this was him bragging on the internet. Three years old. Yeah, yeah. Stabbed to death in prison. Yes. In just a few months October ago. October 2019, possibly by another sex offender. I just, think, I just find it funny that an, it's another sex offender that they think did it. And it's like, you were so bad that the uh, other sex offender was just like, you're a son of a bitch. I'm going to kill you. Maybe, <laughs> like, like, maybe you were that start bad. a chain effect and they'll just all stab each other. I know, right? Well, I'm glad that that one at least got his justice. I thought too. you would. I thought you would enjoy that. Yes, one. <laughs> that that makes me happy. All right, the next one, William James Vahey, or I don't know, whatever it is, was an American expatriate school teacher and convicted child molester. William James Vahey drugged and abused hundreds of pupils at international schools around the world. On April twenty second, twenty fourteen, the FBI made a shocking announcement. They were launching an international sex crime investigation into his 42-year teaching career in Nicaragua, the UK, Venezuela, Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, Greece, Iran, Spain, and Lebanon. He moved around a lot to not get caught. I have never seen another case where an individual may have molested this many children over a long period of time, Special Agent Patrick Franson told the media. Incredibly, as Bay he moved from school to school during his four-decade career, it never came to light that he was already a convicted pedophile. In 1969, working as a teacher's aide in Long Beach, California, he had been charged with lewd and lascivious behavior for fondling the penises of boys as young as seven while teaching them to swim. And he kept ahead of the sex offender registry by moving around. They lost track of him. So he didn't remain yeah, on the sex yeah. offender list because they lost he track of where he went. So much. Yeah. He would set up a travel club at, when he would start to work at a school. So he could take the children away from the parents and other authority figures, and then he would drug and abuse them. And when other teachers were sent as chaperones, he sometimes drugged them too, just to keep them out of the way. He also used sleepovers with his own sons to victimize their friends. In March 2014, he checked into a small Minnesota hotel and killed himself. Ah, good for him. Couldn't th have happened to a better person. He knew he was about to get, I don't know how, he, he it didn't explain, he caught. was about to get caught. Yeah. A thousand miles south, special agents at FBI office in Houston were waiting for a search warrant that would allow them to open a 16 gig flash drive that had recently arrived from the U.S. Embassy in Nicaragua. It had pictures and he stuff was about that to get caught. he was about to get caught. But I couldn't find details on uh, how he, he knew exactly. He just saved the taxpayers a whole lot of money. And it was his own housekeeper that turned this, uh, Turn him in? Yeah, that Good. turned in that flash drive. Here's Good. the deal. It, the, the article that I read said that 
she had stole a computer for him, like a laptop from him while she was working as his housekeeper. I don't know if she already, I kind of get the idea that maybe she already knew. Yeah. And that she stole it for a reason. And I don't know for Not sure. Not just to be a thief. Yeah. Or maybe she was a thief and stole and, it and, found and realized it, but, what she yeah. had. But yeah. either way, she turned over the flash drive once she Good saw those her. pictures and stuff of him with passed out kids, you know. Good for her. So. Not all heroes wear capes. Yep. So he didn't even get to go to jail at all. He just killed himself before Good. he even got caught. Good riddance. Matthew Boucher. I, I was thinking. Butcher? I wonder, Butcher? I was wondering if it was Boucher. Boucher? Like, like Bobby Boucher. B-U-C-H-E-R. <laughs> I don't know. Faces a combined sentence of 60 years in prison for the crimes he has been convicted of to date. Prosecutors say he could face additional charges if more victims come forward. He was already sentenced to 45 years in prison and was found guilty of 62 additional counts of child sex crimes. In 2016, Kenton County Police investigation by Sergeant Chris Petaluga and Detective Jay Downs revealed that Matthew Boucher was engaged in sexual activity with a 12-year-old child. The same investigation led to the execution of a search warrant on his residence and seizure of electronic devices which were found to contain homemade child pornography depicting him engaging in sex acts with underage victims. Bradbury's investigation revealed the then 15-year-old child met him online. Boucher's online profile claimed he was also 16 years old. When confronted by the victim's family with their disbelief about his age, Boucher claimed to be 19 years old, but in fact he was 27. He took the child on dates to the zoo, museums, out to dinner while pretending to be 19. He engaged in sex acts with the child at an apartment in Fort Mitchell that he shared with his mother. Shortly after the child's 16th birthday, which is Kentucky's legal age of consent, Boucher revealed his real age and the relationship ended. His computer contained child pornographic images, including of his victim. In 2019, there are at least two other victims, but investigators are still working to identify more from photos and information on his computer. So far, there are 62 plus charges. So, dude was pretending to be a minor for a little while. He mm -hmm. must look really young. Yeah, I saw a picture. He did actually look. And then it turned out he was yeah. saying he was 19, but he was actually 27. Yeah. What a douche. Mm hmm. And but he's still he's st he hasn't been convicted yet, right? No, he's still. It looks like he's still going to trial. Yeah, I couldn't find any further information, so I'm assuming it has. Well, gone he was to already sentenced to 45 years in prison. Yeah, so now I think he's awaiting trial because they're still trying 60, to dig up. They're yeah. still trying to dig up more victims because they have all these pictures of different victims, but they don't know they who, don't they, know who they, are. they are. Yeah, yeah, or if so, they're underage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which I'm sure most of them are, knowing this guy. Jesus. Yeah. Okay, the next one, Boris Kunz... Oh, man, these have got... This whole, art, this whole episode is full of names I cannot pronounce. So there's, there's a way to know if... Uh, there's a red flag for a pedophile. They have a really fucked up name to pronounce. Well, then you have some that are like William Charles Thomas. Yeah, and you're like, true. what? I mean, you really can't tell. You really can't. Yeah. Boris Kunzevitsky was sentenced by a Melbourne court on January 20th. So this is real recent. January 29th, 2020. That's weeks ago. To 35 years in prison after he pleaded guilty to sexually abusing for children for more than 15 years and producing child pornography in which he included children to have sex with other children. Among his 47 child victims were five who re resided in Singapore where he lived until he was arrested in Australia in September 2017. He pleaded guilty to 59 charges in total, including having sex with a child, making child pornography material, inducing a child to have sex with another child, persistent sexual abuse of a child, and importing child pornography material. Between May 2010 and April 2015, he created more than a thousand photographs and videos depicting children engaged in sexual activity with each other under his direction or pictures and films of him sexually abusing the children. His crimes went undetected till a victim was identified in 2016. German police had found 55 child pornography images of an Australian boy who was groomed and abused by him. Police officers found thousands of images and videos on a laptop and two hard drives showing him sexually abusing children. The laptop and hard drives 
had been shipped over by Australian authorities from his home in Singapore. The, I just thought I would make a note of this. The file folder on, where they found all this stuff on his computer was titled Jailbait. Oh, how fitting. So he knew. He knew exactly what he was doing was wrong. Yeah. Most of them do. They know right from wrong. They just don't care. And here's the... Oh, yeah, you can do this one. William Charles Thomas. Yeah. We just <laughs> 58-year-old handyman from Morrisville, Pennsylvania, accused of serial child rape and kept a perverse shrine in his trailer home, which included at least a 1,000 pornographic images of children and hundreds of used pairs of children's underwear, according to prosecutors. Oh, what a sick bastard. The walls and ceilings of the trailer were covered with trophy evidence, according to Weintraub, including photographs of naked children, graphic drawings, children's dolls, written accounts of child molestation that included names. The names of the three children Thomas is accused of assaulting were found on Polaroid photos in the trailer. Police arrested Thomas after a good Samaritan living in the trailer, living in a trailer the handyman had worked on, removed a piece of plywood, turned it over, and found a description of the rapes of two young girls who, along with their parents, were identified by name. Police are still looking for other victims and said Thomas wrote about molesting children dating back to the 1970s. As of 2017, he's in prison waiting trial. No I could not find any. Yeah, I could not find yeah. any other updates on that. Hopefully, he died in a fire. Jesus, I, I don't like. I don't. The the fact that they can't even put names to all of those kids. The fact that there were How hundreds the for kids. I mean. Hundreds of used pairs of children's underwear. You know there are those kids are out there. Or he could also, as sick and perverted as he is, he could be taking them off of clotheslines. In that's places. true. But the fact that he had all the porno images of, of yeah, different children yeah, yeah. and all, and that he just he described in written accounts. So I mean, they're real. We we don't even know how much of this happened and how many kids there really were you know like it's but it's horrifying and I guess that's one thing that really bothered me about all of this is yes I expected some some real horrors but how many out there there are spreading these pornographic images around I guess that, that's one of the most surprising things about doing this research that most of the ones that we discussed in this episode were producing child pornography out of what they were doing. Yeah. And the fact that this stuff is getting passed around and it's, and they're not getting caught. Like I, I was really surprised by that. I mean, yes, I did know that child pornography is out there. I'm not sure. stupid. I'm not that naive. I know that, that stuff's out there, but I guess I was surprised that out of all of these world's worst pedophiles on this list, the majority of them are, also producing the child pornography on the side. I'm sure that's not their only reason for doing it. They obviously have an urge for that sort of thing. Right, and they want to but show off. The fact that they're sharing it and not getting caught for long periods of time really horrifies me because you know that somebody out there had to see that was maybe wasn't even into this sort of thing has seen it at some point sure. and didn't report oh, it. No, I've seen it and reported it years and years and years ago, back in the late nineties, mm -hmm. when I was still new to the internet, there was a chat website called Chatropolis. Do you remember Chatropolis mm -hmm. at all? I must have missed that. It was called Chatropolis and you could go on there and it was one of those scrolling chat things where you met up with friends and things. And I went into one of the chat rooms. I'm, I cannot remember for life of me what it was called. And this guy was posting images of little kids together, naked. Mm -hmm. And I immediately reported it. I reported it to the website officials, and I reported it to the police. And without anything was done about it. But that was my first taste of, oh, my God, the Internet is completely evil. Yeah. And that was like 1997. But I remember it because it was like burning in my brain. I've always wondered, who were those children? Mm -hmm. Where did they come from? Where are they now? Are they okay? I think something like that would probably drive me insane. Because I just, I can't, I can't even. Yeah. It's awful. I, I just, I wish it didn't exist. I wish that we could wish it away.
Anyway, I think we're to the end of this episode. All of our contact info is in the show notes now, so we don't have to repeat it every single fucking time. Uh, <laughs> Next episode, we promise, will be way more lighthearted. Yes, we'll try to do something maybe more fun. I don't know. We'll try to figure it out. Uh, <laughs> or maybe something just silly, like time travel or... I don't know because that is that, that has been on one. the. I have I've had that Absolutely. I've had that on the list because we'll, I'm we'll totally be into time travel. Yeah, we are 100 percent Hoovians. Um, the possibilities of time travel and cases where that supposedly has happened, etc. I don't necessarily believe that, that that it has, but I believe the possibility is there. So, but we we might do that next time and make it a little bit more interesting or more lighthearted than this really fucking terrible subject but anyway yeah our info is in the show notes and we also have our fried chicken fund as, as i call it you can donate through our anchor fm site um and also this we don't want to give a shout out to the great unsolved which is another trick crime podcast and just for the heck of it, we haven't said, mentioned him in a while. We're going to give a shout out to Mr. Whiskas Clubhouse because we love him. We love him. We do love him. Anyway. So, and a shout out to Bonham. And a, yes. Oh, God. I forgot to shout out we Bonham this episode. Shout out yes. Bonham, we have to shout out Bonham like every time. Every time. Anyway. <laughs> hope y'all are having a good one and hope you don't have to listen to this god awful subject matter ever again. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for listening. Talk hard. Talk hard.